None of us chaps are getting any younger, but there is something we men can do about it. Look after your skin and you'll look younger and healthier. Caldera Lab sent me three fantastic products to try out. Caldera Lab creates high-performance men's self-care products by combining pharmaceutical-grade science, nature's purest and most potent ingredients, and sustainable business practices. Their new three-product skincare regimen is designed to be an easy three-step process for all skin types. The regimen is super easy to use. Every morning, use the clean slate cleanser, followed by the base layer. Every night, use the clean slate cleanser, followed by the good serum. And there's no risk in trying the regimen. Every purchase is backed by Caldera Labs' 100% money-back guarantee. Try it for 60 days. If you don't love it, then you can get a 100% refund, no questions asked. To start your journey to healthier skin, visit calderalab.com and use the code MarkFelton for 30% off. So click the link below, or go to calderalab.com forward slash MarkFelton. So, you want to be a dictator? Well, you need the right look, and that was as true in World War II as it is today. A unique uniform certainly helps, and a lair or two in which to make your nefarious plans. Transportation really marks out the dictator. You need big, armoured, and preferably black cars. An armoured train is always a nice touch. And, of course, you need a dedicated regiment of heavily armed bodyguards. But for the truly upwardly mobile despot, a personal plane is the highest form of power, none more so than in World War II, when airborne leaders were a relatively new phenomena. And I'm sure you've noticed that the trappings of World War II dictators have now become standard for all world leaders, regardless of their political persuasions. Adolf Hitler was the first modern politician to travel regularly by aircraft, beginning during his election campaigning in the late 1920s and early 1930s. The aircraft of choice was the Junkers Ju-52 3M, an early airliner run by Lufthansa and known as the Iron Annie. On the 5th of October 1939, Hitler first flew in the aircraft that was to become his primary means of aerial transport during World War II, the Focke-Wulf 200 Condor. His personal pilot, Hans Bauer, had convinced Hitler that the Condor was the superior aircraft compared with the older Ju-52, as well as being much safer. The Condor, designed as a civilian airliner for Lufthansa by Kurt Tank, entered Luftwaffe service in 1937. Named Condor after the giant Andean bird due to its huge 33-metre wingspan, Hitler was always flown by Bauer, who was later a general in the SS and not the Luftwaffe. Behind the cockpit was an equipment compartment with the flight engineer's panel and positions for the radio operator and navigator. There were also two defensive positions, an upper turret mounting a 13mm MG-131 machine gun, and a ventral turret with a 7.9mm MG-15. However, Bauer notes in his autobiography that mostly Hitler's plane flew unarmed. A door from here led through to Hitler's personal cabin, the cabin was armoured, the walls, floor and ceiling were 12mm of armour plate, the windows 50mm of thick bulletproof glass. The most novel feature in the cabin was Hitler's special parachute chair. In the event of an emergency, he could strap on a parachute and escape through a hatch in the floor of the aircraft. Behind Hitler's cabin was another passenger cabin with six seats. This was where guests and various members of Hitler's staff would also travel with the Führer. The windows in both cabins were fitted with privacy curtains to prevent sun glare. The interior was polished wood resembling a rather plush Pullman railway carriage. While in the air, a steward served meals and hot drinks as required. In the rear of the plane there was a small galley. No cooking was permitted aboard Hitler's aircraft, and instead a specially insulated cabinet contained preheated meals, as found on modern airliners. Hot coffee and hot water for tea was available, though no alcohol was served while on board. Hitler's plane would be shadowed by a second Condor, this time carrying staff such as military adjutants, servants and so on. Security was tight. Measures were taken to prevent the use of bombs on board the plane. 
The potentially most lethal type of bomb that could have been smuggled aboard Hitler's plane was one using a barometric fuse that made no telltale ticking sounds and detonated once the plane reached a certain altitude. To guard against this, before every trip, Hitler's aircraft was taken up for a 10-15 to 15 minute test flight, including up to cruising altitude. So what became of Hitler's plane? It was destroyed in an Allied bombing raid on Tempelhof Airport in Berlin on the 18th of July 1944. Subsequently, Hitler used another special leader's Condor, a Focke-Wulf 200 C4U1 model that was also used by Heinrich Himmler and Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz, though its internal configuration was different to Hitler's personally modified Condor. At war's end, Hitler was about to change to an even bigger plane, a luxuriously appointed Junkers Ju-290. This aircraft was destroyed at Perking in Bavaria during an American air raid on the 24th of April 1945 while Hitler was still trying to direct the defence of Berlin from his bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery Garden. The replacement Condor that Hitler used following the destruction of his personal aircraft in July 1944 ended up being flown to Flensburg in northern Germany at war's end as Hitler refused to leave Berlin. This aircraft was captured intact by British forces in May 1945 and flown to RAF Farnborough for evaluation in July. It was placed on public display during October and November 1945 and then somewhat inexplicably scrapped on the 15th of December 1946. Hitler's arch-nemesis, Soviet dictator Josef Stalin, had a very different attitude to flying. Like Hitler, Stalin had a fleet of black armoured limousines, a bodyguard regiment and an armoured train, but unlike Hitler, Stalin hated flying. Stalin only flew once, to the Tehran Conference in Iran in 1943. Instead, fearing assassination, he usually travelled around by armoured train, including to both the Yalta and Potsdam conferences with the other Allied leaders. The Soviet VIP aircraft of the period was the Petelyakov PE-8, a converted Red Army bomber. Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov had been the first to fly in this type of aircraft. However, when Stalin flew to Tehran, he used a Lend-Lease C-47 Skytrain outfitted for VIP travel. Benito Mussolini was the dictator of Italy from 1922 to 1945. He chose as his personal plane the Savoia Marchetti SM-81, known as the Pipistrello, or Bat. The SM-81 had more than a passing resemblance to another more famous tri-motor, the German Junkers 52. The SM-81 first appeared in 1935 as a three-engine bomber and transport. It proved effective in Ethiopia and the Spanish Civil War, but was too slow for World War II, with a cruising speed of only 170 miles per hour. Mussolini's plane was armed with four machine guns in two powered turrets, each having a dual 7.7mm Breda machine gun. Mussolini's personal plane was painted white and was christened Taratuga, Italian for tortoise, due to its ponderous cruising speed. After Italy entered the war on the Axis side in 1940, Mussolini's plane was camouflaged for security reasons. This photo, taken on the 19th of July 1943, shows Tortoise leaving Belluno to fly to Feltre for a meeting with Hitler. While these important talks were underway, Rome was bombed by the Allies for the first time. And just a few days later, Mussolini was deposed as leader. Mussolini was dramatically rescued by the Germans in September 1943 and installed as the puppet leader of the Italian Social Republic in northern Italy. Thereafter, Mussolini no longer had a personal Italian aircraft at his disposal, and any travelling he undertook was made courtesy of his German minders. The fate of his SM-81 remains unclear, but it doesn't appear to have survived the war. A few did serve on in the post-war Italian Air Force until 1950, before they were retired. Surprisingly, one of the World War II dictators, apart from Stalin, was actually on the Allied side. With the flamboyant title of Generalissimo, Chiang Kai-shek had been the effective dictator of nationalist China since eliminating all opposition in the late 1920s. 
A deeply corrupt and somewhat unreliable ally of the US and Britain during the war, the importance of nationalist Chinese forces to the war against Japan meant that his corruption and misrule was largely overlooked by the democracies, particularly the United States, and Chang's military well supplied with Lend-Lease war material. Before the war, Chang had been very friendly with Germany, and his personal plane was a well-appointed Junkers Ju-52 3M. Chang's personal pilot was an American, at that time Julian A. Barr, until he died in 1939. The Junkers 52 was one of eight sent to China, seven serving with Eurasia, a new Chinese airline, and the eighth purchased by the nationalist government for Chang's use. However, during World War II, as China was in the receipt of so much U.S. aid, Chang changed his plane to a Douglas C-47, flown by American Captain Roy Leonard. A converted C-47 was later gifted to Chang by the United States Air Force in 1947, and was used to carry the president and his wife into exile on Taiwan in 1949, following Chang's defeat in the Chinese Civil War to Communist Mao Zedong. Chang died in 1975, but his personal plane continued in use as a VIP transport until 1981, and is currently on display at Daoyuan Airport Museum in Taiwan. The man who replaced Chiang Kai-shek as leader of China in 1949 was Mao Zedong, and he didn't have his own plane during World War II, but quickly acquired all the trappings of dictatorial rule after he came to power, including a succession of personal planes. Stalin sold China 49 Ilyushin IL-14 airliners, the first entering Chinese service in 1954. Used as regional airliners, a handful were converted into VIP transports to carry Mao, Premier Zhou Enlai, and other government ministers. These were the special 14M variants with a lengthened fuselage. The IL-14 is a short-to-medium-range, twin-piston-engined airliner which first flew in the Soviet Union in July 1950. Chinese models continued in service until the late 1990s. Rugged and reliable, it was ideal to land at China's often basic airports. VIP aircraft were outfitted in rather austere communist style, more functional than luxurious. There was a special seating area for Chairman Mao. There was also seating for a handful of top aides and advisers. The rear of the cabin were a couple of divan beds so you could lie down and rest, particularly on long flights. And, in the tail section, a very functional lavatory. There was a flight crew of four, and the maximum speed of 259 miles per hour, and a service ceiling of just over 24,000 feet. Range was about 800 miles when fully loaded. Mao stopped using these aircraft in 1969, when they were replaced, somewhat surprisingly, by three British Hawker Sidley Trident airliners. This particular IL-14 is preserved today at the Shanghai Aviation Museum. So what about the Japanese? Well, Japan didn't have a dictator per se in World War II, but for most of it, a rather dictatorial prime minister, General Hideki Tojo. It appears that Tojo didn't have a dedicated plane, rather he used standard army transport planes if he flew. Above Tojo was of course the god emperor Hirohito. Though the emperor had official limousines and a train, he never had his own plane, for one simple reason. Emperor Hirohito never flew before or during the war. In fact, his first ever flight wasn't until 1954 in an American plane during the occupation of Japan. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.